Zechariah 2 6. Judah is back in the land. <clears throat> They've been thinking of themselves. Through Haggai, God has spoken and said, Get building the temple. And then we read kind of they were not fully into it. Zechariah picks up encouraging Judah. I mean, they've been 70 years in Babylon, according to the time of Daniel. They have been conquered by the Babylonians and the Chaldeans. They've been in Babylon. And you would think how they would be thinking. It would be uneasy to go back. It would be looking forward to go back. Fear. Doubt. And it says, ho, ho. That's the only place in the Bible you see ho, ho. Now, there is a worldly character that goes around saying ho, ho. But the Bible... The ones of God say they don't say ho ho. They say holy, holy, holy. It's the only place you find ho ho. Come forth and flee from the land of the north. Now, there's another time in the book of Revelation for God's people that God says, Come out of her, Babylon. This is what God's telling Judah now. God wants Israel in their land loving and honoring only Him. And they failed. God wants the church only for Jesus. Only that which is holy and right. And the church has failed that. We're to come out of the world. We're to be separate. And we are living like Judah. You think, oh, the Catholic Church, and they got Holy Mary. Well, Judah, according to Jeremiah, many times had the Queen of Heaven. I was in a Baptist church that I called Baptist Catholic. And they would have the Catholic daily bread. And you couldn't say anything about them. God wants us separate. He wants us divided. When the, the sons of Noah got out of that ark, Ham was to go all the way down south to Africa. Shem was supposed to go east to the Orient. And Japheth was to stay in the European nation. God gave us languages in Babel that separated us. Because if we ever got together, we would cause much destruction. That's what the world wants us to do. Everybody get together, but don't get together under the King James Bible. I've been rebuked for the King James Bible belief that I hold in a Baptist church. I have been rebuked in, in other forms, asked not to come back to church because, because of the worldliness of BBS. Decoration and false teaching. I've been asked to leave a church because I started dating a woman who was biblically divorced from her husband. I've been asked to leave a church because I had set forth that we were going to think about starting a home church in the city that we lived in. Flee from the land of the north. 
and the Bible will discuss itself in a moment, saith the Lord, For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, north, east, south, and west. Judah's all over the place. Israel's all over the place. They are that there today. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughters of, there it is, Babylon, north. God don't want you there no more. And we'll get to Nehemiah and Nehemiah, I mean, we're already studied, but I'm saying, we come to Nehemiah and we find out they have married the Babylonian women. And the Babylonian men had married the Jewish women. And their children didn't even know the language. I guess in, a, in the sense that Nebuchadnezzar actually succeeded in chapter 1 of Daniel. He changed the language and he changed the custom. And the people didn't even know who they were. But Satan in the world is not going to get a hundred complete white off the world of the nation of Israel, the Jews. Not going to happen. The Babylonians are gone. You, know, you get churches today, you know, the Greek, the Greek. The original biblical Greek, they're gone. I have been told, and I don't know the language because I speak English. I'm told that if you were to take the biblical Greek and go over Greece and hand that biblical writing of Greek to a Greek man off the street, and he wouldn't even know how to read it. And that's the English language today. How we come from the old English. Oh, let me take that. We come from the Egyptian hieroglyphics. And we come to the old English, the archaic words of the King James Bible. And you look at what people are writing on, on Facebook, and you look at what people are writing graffiti and all that, and we're going right back to the hieroglyphics. There was a time when I was going first into the, the, the ministry, going to school, and I just thought it was funny. You know, California was going to start teaching back then it was colored the black man's language it wasn't a black man's language there's all kinds of black men's language in Africa it's a ghetto I have nothing nothing to do I don't want to learn English you listen to a black person today I've heard enough I watch these court dramas and all that and I listen to them. they can't say the word ask it's ask ask they don't want to learn English. And we got a favor to them. For thus saith the Lord host, and we're, we're getting to a reason. After the glory have he sent me unto the nations that spoil you. Now, thus saith the Lord, Jehovah. After the glory. Has he, the Lord, sent me, here we go again, Zechariah, unto the nations which spoiled you, Judah. For he that touches you, for he, God, that touches you, Israel, touches, wait a minute, for he that touches you, You, Judah, you got to read this real slow, touches the apple of his eye, God. Somebody that touches you, touches the apple of God's eye. And that expression is found five times in the Bible. And every single time it's a reference to a Jew, to Israel, to Judah, or Israelite. And yet, how common is that expression thrown out there? The apple of my eye. The apple of my eye. If you're not talking about God, and you're not talking about the nation of Israel, you are misapplying that scripture. 
And all you got to do is get a concordance, an electric one, computer one, and look up Apple and I. That's all you need to do. You don't have to put it in quotes or anything. It's that simple. You got to be careful of the quotes that you use because they could come out of the Bible and they may not be for you to use. Remember God said, I will bless them that bless you, Israel. I will curse them that curse you, Israel. And replacement theology is when, when the church or Gentiles gets the blessing that Israel, that God's all finished with Israel. That's replacement theology. The Catholics did it. The Congregational Church does it. The American government does it. We don't want Jesus. We want Donald Trump. And we want to eliminate all the devils, the Democrats. You're getting pretty well near replacement theology. And when you apply the apple of his eye, God's eye, the nation of Israel, and you use that for your girlfriend, you use that for your boyfriend, and they're not Jewish, you just did replacement theology. Oh, yeah, I know a Baptist preacher. Plenty of them. They'll con their way out of it. The scriptures... They're either written to Israel, the Jew. They're either written to the, to the Gentile, the non-Jew. Or they're written to the church, the Christian, or all the world in general. Apple of your eyes written to the Jew. Five verses. So what we're going to do is, if you can see this, I know on Facebook you can't, we're going to look it up. Because I know you're too lazy. Deuteronomy 32.10. We're going to look up the five places. Because if I were to leave you to look it up, you wouldn't do it. That's why you sit under a deceiving preacher. Because you don't, in doubt, check it out. I do. Deuteronomy 32.10. He found him in a desert land. And the waste hollowing wilderness, wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Psalm 17 8. Keep me, uh, keep me as the apple of thy eye. Well, Psalms is written by Hebrew. Hide me under the shadow of thy wing. That's a Hebrew written to God. Proverbs 7.2, written by Solomon. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thy eye. The law, that's God's law. Solomon's law was God's law. Until he failed it. Lamentations 2.18, their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall, the daughter of Zion. Let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eye cease. Then Zechariah 2.8. It's clearly referenced to the law. It's clearly referenced to written by Hebrews. It's clearly referenced to Hebrews, Israel. For behold, I will shake my hand, that's God, upon them. All right, so let's go back to 2.8 two again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, that's God. After the glory he, God, sent me unto the nations, plural, which spoil you. Assyria, uh, Babylon. Edom, you is Israel. For he that touches you, Israel, touches the apple of his God's eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, the he that touches you. 
So the he that touches you is a nation. They shall be spoiled to their servant. Well, a servant does it. That's a worker. That's an employee. And so we can understand, is the employee is going to spoil the employer. And the employer is going to be left with nothing. And the employee is going to have everything. If you can understand it that way. These nations had slaves. They had servants. These nations are going to fall to their servants. America is falling to the African American. I read today and I put it on my Facebook. There's a school district. It's like the fact is my uh, uh, priority and how long you've been there. They're going to start laying off teachers and they say we're going to do the white ones first. My friend, I thought we bought the Africans here for, for slaves. How did they get in control? Listen, you know who a black man will vote for in the elections? The, the, the political candidate, whoever, is going to give them free everything and give them all, all, all voice and shut the white man up. I'm sorry, you don't like what I'm saying? That's tough because it's true. Because an employer has to hire a colored person. He has to hire a female. But nowhere in his hiring does it say he has to hire a Bible standard man that loves his wife, loves his children, and is faithful to his church. Friend, that's how America started. Do you realize in early America... The foundation of America, the, the Christian that it used to be, you could not be on a jury if you did not belong to a church. You're an atheist? We can't trust what you're going to say. We can't trust what you're going to judge. How do you know what to judge? Hey, we come a long way backwards. America is being destroyed by the inside. Out. There are people that come to this nation, and all the preachers say, oh, everybody that's come to this nation, they just love this nation. No, they're coming to this, na this nation and destroying us. How, does it, how do we get destroyed? Okay, December 7th, 1941, is a day that live in infamy when the Japanese uh, 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 Navy came and attacked Pearl Harbor, and destroyed our battleship group. And we went over there and we dropped nuclear bombs, Hiroshima, and then we went over there and fixed Japan. You got a Kawasaki motorcycle? Kawasaki was one of the cities that was a target of World War II. You got a Mitsubishi car? Mitsubishi made the engines for the Japanese Zeros that attacked Pearl Harbor. Suzuki? You go check World War II and you'll find out those Japanese names that you buy, you don't even buy American no more. They were the enemy. We're destroying ourselves by the servants. He shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Okay, I went on a rampage. For behold, I will shake, God will shake my hand, God's hand over them, the nations. They shall be a spoil to their servants. Ye Israel shall know that the Lord, God, Jehovah, has sent me. 
I don't think that means Zachariah, because Zachariah doesn't have no power. But I don't know who the me is. I'm going to be right out and tell you. I don't, I'm not afraid to say I don't know. They shall be a spoiled. The, the nations that offended and curse Israel, they're going to be spoiled. I will curse them that curse you. Plain and simple. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, Jews. For lo, I come. All right, go back to 2 9. <laughs> Ye shall know that the Lord God, Jehovah of hosts, has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come. That's Jesus. So Jesus is in 2.9. I don't like the Old Testament. <laughs> and I will dwell in the midst of thee. That's Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. When Jesus eliminates off this face of this earth the goat nation, Everything they have and everything is theirs is going to be <laughs> a program. That's what happened in Israel when Joshua brought them in. And they come across the thing and they're fighting these battles and Joshua lays out the landmarks. This belongs to Judah. This belongs to Benjamin. This belongs to Dan. This belongs to Asher. This belongs to Manasseh. And they, and they go in there. Well, I'll be. What's that, Isaac? You see that house over there? Yeah. It's got grapevine. Yeah, it does. It got some big grapes. Yes, it does. I think I'll take that. Okay. That's yours. Go get it. Caleb said, I want that mountain. That mountain belongs to me. Naboth told Ahab, hey, this land, this land was given to me by Joshua and my family. I can't give it to you. And there's a place, I forget, I, it was one of the very first messages I preached. When you went into that land, it's there for you, everything. You want a vineyard? It's already been pre-planted. Thank you very much, heathen. And it's the aspect is, hey, you know what? You may have to work at Walmart. That's okay. You use the money you got for Walmart to pay your bills and help pay your church so your church can have electricity. You send missionaries out. Walmart's not a sin. Now, there's some employers, in some ways you get money, it is a sin. That man went in there, he got that vineyard, he got those grapes and all that, and it came time to three years to come before Jerusalem, and bring, he bring his bounty. It wasn't because, uh, no problem a Gentile planted that, and now dead, and that's his now. And he bring his full, full book bounty. That's spoiling the... You realize when they went back, Cyrus, or Cyrus, one of the two, sends them back with everything that belonged to the temple and more? <laughs> he literally gave uh, Ezra, he gave for the temple. You need lumber? You go talk to that guy over there. He'll get you all the lumber you need. There's only one thing that Nehemiah did not ask for when he was sent. He said, listen, I don't need protection. I don't need an army. Because I told the king, the Lord's going to protect us. And if I told him, you know, hey, listen, the Lord's going to protect us. I need a 45, 32, and I need a, you know, that don't look very well. That don't look like I got faith in the Lord, Christians. It's going to take my gun away from me. Okay, maybe God will. What are you going to do if God takes your gun away from you? You're going to fight God? No guns in New Jerusalem. Heck, the Bible says about King Saul's army. Only King Saul and, and Jonathan had weapons. Nobody else had any weapons. They got victories. Sing and rejoice, O Lord Zion, for lo, I come, Jesus, God. So that's a Jehovah Witness. I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord, Jesus, God, Jehovah. Many nations, there's the sheep nations, 
All right. How many sheep nations are there? I know. You do? Yeah, many. Well, how many? Many. You know, many nations that go into the millennium because they help the Jews is far more better than the many that went to Broadway and went into hell. Think about that. Few went into the straight gate into eternal life. Many went the broad way that leads to destruction. Many nations are going to go into the millennium by helping the Jew, and they didn't even know what they were doing. Shall be joined to the Lord in that day. Remember I told you? Mark that. Write it out. Somehow. Put your salt or your light on that, whatever you want to do. He shall be, and, excuse me, in that day, and shall be my people. That's not Jews. Usually when God says my people, he's talking about the Jews. He's talking about the nations. So those nations that go into millennium, I mean, will, will they end up in hell later? No, they're, they're God's people. God cannot. I'll never leave you for safety. How do you like that? You know, when I grew up, there was a television show, and you don't need to know. When I grew up, before I was saved in the 70s and all that, it was a great thing to plant a tree in Israel. You paid for I don't know, even if they even... Your money went bogus, like your money goes bogus places. Today. But, you know, you buy a tree and plant it in Israel. Ooh, we're going to help the Jews. And that would, you know, that was the current thing. You would go to heaven because you planted a tree in Jerusalem. When God says in, Reve in Revelation, one-third of the trees are going to be burned. Now, what before you that one-third of the trees are the trees that people planted in the 70s for being good? God will be pleased. Don't people just love me? Nope. There are people who bless the Jews unknowingly and they will go off into glory. And I believe that's what the new heavens are for. Because I know the new earth is the Jew. I know new Jerusalem is the church. I will, see, what and I was trying to say, I lost track, is Satan will try to get you into a salvation that's not the current salvation. I guarantee in the tribulation period, Satan's going to deceive the people. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Never mind that temple. Never mind the blood sacrifice. Just, see, look, Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's going to be the tribulation deceivement of Satan. Because Satan's got some people to build an ark in Kentucky or Tennessee, whatever state it is. And then really go against the Bible. Charge them to go in it where God didn't charge nobody. Maybe, maybe the world didn't go into Noah's ark because the, the fee was too high. I don't know. That's why people hate me. I say things like that. I will dwell in the midst of thee. That's Jesus. That's the temple. That's Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be the center of the world. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts, that's everything, has sent me unto thee. That's got to be Jesus, not Zechariah. So, Let's go back to 6. Ho, holes come forth. Flee from the land of the north. Get out of Babylon. Saith the Lord, Jehovah, God. For I have spread you aboard, God, as the four winds of the heaven, east, north, west, and south. Saith the Lord, God. Deliver thyself, Israel, O Zion, that dwells with the daughter of Babylon, for thus saith the Lord God of hosts, After the glory 
has he, God, sent Jesus into the nation's plural, which spoiled you, the Jews. For he, the nations, that touches you, the Jew, touches the apple of the eye. Now can you see we're, uh, we're now also in the tribulation application. Don't mess with the Jew. For behold, I will shake, Jesus will shake my hand upon them, the nations, and the word that comes out of his mouth and his fiery eyes and the horse hoofs. And they, the Gentiles, shall be a spoil to their servants, those who were under them, Ye Jews shall know that the Lord God Jehovah of hosts has sent me Jesus. And when you read Revelation 19, it says that he has a name that no man knew. Why doesn't Zechariah just say, because Revelation 19, the cross reference, says no one knows his name. What's his name here? Me. Sing, O rejoice, O daughter of Zion, the Jews, for lo, I, Jesus, come. I, Jesus, will dwell in the midst of thee, Israel, saith the Lord. Many nations, the sheep, shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, expression used for the Jew, but it's the sheep nations. Sheep nations are the nations of Israel. Other sheep have I have, not of this and the church is so good to go run oh that's us the church is never called sheep the only other sheep people are called are the nations at the second advent that help the Jew I will dwell, I mean, we can spiritually apply the sheep, but other sheep, that's the nations that help the Jews. That's not the church. Because then you want that Roman Catholic Jesus, the Italian Jesus, to come walking, carrying his sheep over his shoulder. That's the Christian. No, it's not the Christian. Because in the church age, if there's a lost sheep, God sends the Christian to go out and get them. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. My people, that's the nation. Scripture with scripture, apply the pronouns. I, Jesus, will dwell in the midst of thee, Israel, and the nations. Thou shalt know... Now, there's some nations in, in the millennium that don't listen. Thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me, Jesus, unto thee, nations in Israel. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, Israel, his portion, God, in the holy land. There's the holy, ain't the holy land today. Uh, you know, preacher, we go to the holy land. We visit the Holy Land with the dumb of the rock. With the dumb of the rock, that's the Holy Land. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Preacher. Did you pay for somebody to escort you around? Yeah, we had the Arabian. Arabian telling you about the Bible? You can't even bring the Bible into Arabia. Even if you're our troops. When we began Desert Storm, I knew men that were going over there, Afghanistan. The first thing they had to do was they had to open up their ditty bag, take out their Bible. It was handed over to the government, and the government was caught burning the Bibles. You can't take that over. 
Oh, you can fight for their freedom, but you can't have your freedom to have a Bible. Don't you tell me. Don't you argue with me. I know. Holy Land? Okay, uh, 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 who, who took you around Jerusalem? Well, the Catholic. They showed us the place where Mary. They showed us the place where Jesus died. Uh, where did Jesus die? Excuse me, he died in Jerusalem. No, Hebrew says outside the gate. Hebrew says outside the gate. What are they doing taking you inside the gate? What are you lying? It's not the Holy Land. You were deceived. Holy Land? You mean where in, in February where they marched around with pride and gay and, and, and lesbians and, and queers? Holy Land? Revelation says right now it's going to be Sodom and Gomorrah, that place is called. Holy Land is when Jesus Christ is there. As King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, oh, Baptist preachers, they went and gone post-tribulation on me. They're going to bring in the kingdom and Jesus is going to show up and pat them on the back. That's the doctrine of the Catholic Church. That's the doctrine of the Southern Baptist Church. That's the doctrine of the uh, 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 of the Congregational Church. And that's the doctrine of Republicans and Democrats. We're going to make everything great and wonderful. Then Jesus comes and he pats us all on the back. No, no. Jesus is going to come And fix it all up. After it gets all screwed up. Jesus comes and sets up the millennium. You don't do nothing with the millennium. Holy land. The Catholics say, Oh, little town of Bethlehem. How we adore people, places, and things. Come and kiss the Pope's ring. You ding a -ling. By the way, Facebook said, calls that hate speech when I do that. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. And shall choose Jerusalem again. We mean again, if it's the Holy Land now. It was chosen. When David conquered Jerusalem, where Solomon built the temple, it will be chosen again when Jesus returns to take David's throne. I'm, st I I'm getting ready to step away from the Baptist. Totally. And I was thinking about today, you know, I just call myself a separatist. Because I even got to separate myself from the Baptist teachers. The Baptist church. They're all prone today in, in voting and every, in politics and everything that's wrong. Be silent. <laughs> oh, God's not saying that to me. Silent night. Holy fright, yonder it is, the Pope's delight, Baptist churches joining the flock, turning time on the old clock. You see how God knew? Holy Land, Jerusalem, be silent. You know what Mary said? There's going to be a big generation that's going to call me blessed. You know what they call her? The Blessed Virgin Mary. You know what she's not? Virgin. Mary prophesied. Oh, flesh. Now look at that. Now come on. Holy Land, Jerusalem, be silent. Oh, holy... Oh, little town of Bethlehem, oh, be silent and sing that no more. Most of your Christmas carols are not correct. You're stealing 
from Israel again. Replacement theology. We're coming up to that time again. We're coming up to Tammuz's birthday, the Lord Terry's. Mary, did you know? Yes, she knew. Gabriel told her. Duh! End of story. Can I go home now? Oh, Jesus, what do we get you? Oh, Jesus, we, we got you a six-pack of Scott toilet tissue. The angels are looking down. What's toilet tissue? God's like, you don't want to know. That's part of the curse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Before the Lord. Your Christmas is not before the Lord. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. For he is raised up. Did you get that? Did you get that? What's raised up? Resurrection. And as they went out of the city, he ascended up to heaven. He's raised up out of his holy habitation, heaven. He's raised up. That means Jesus stands up and says, okay, Father, here we go. I'm ready. Jesus has stood twice already. He stood and said, Father, I'm going down to be born in that manger. I'm going to miss you, son. Miss you too, Dad. I'll keep in prayer. They're, they're stoning Stephen and chewing him out, and Jesus stands up. He's going to stand up again. He's going to meet his church in the air. And he's going to stand up again. He's going to get on his horse, get the get the bride, get his bride ready, and we're going to come back for Israel. But there was another time he stood up. His cold, dead body is laying on a rock in a sealed tomb. And then that day, he sits up, uh, stretches. <sighs> Get that stone out of my way, will you? There's the guards, and, and they're quaking. They saw him. That's Jesus. He is raised up. 